Welcome to the world of Parley's Diesel Performance. Today we'll be installing an adjustable fuel plate on a 1998 Cummins 12 valve extended cab. We suggest before you begin laying out all of the parts. As you see, the adjustable fuel plate, and today we'll be installing this in the maximum forward position to achieve an additional 125 horsepower. Next, the boost elbow, and next, the replacement bolt for the tamper-proof screw that comes from the factory. Once again, we recommend that you lay out all parts in advance to make sure that they are included. Also, in addition to these parts, you'll find the instruction set. The tools that will be needed for today's installation are found to the left. A flat blade screwdriver, a 7 16 open end wrench, a 12 millimeter open end wrench, an 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, and a chisel to break away the existing bolt. Having removed the negative battery terminals, we're ready now to start the project. The first step is to remove the five bolts holding the factory air horn in place. The next step in the process is to remove the 7 16 nut holding the intercooler tube in place. Then to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the engine oil dipstick in place. And after that, we will move the entire air horn assembly over towards the driver's fender. Having removed the nuts and bolts, we're now ready to move the air horn towards the driver's fender. As you can see, it's a simple rotation over to the side. Next step, using the 8mm socket, loosen the three bolts that hold the injector line clamp. Once that is completed, carefully move the clamp towards the driver's side of the vehicle. And as you can see here, um, it's going to move about a half an inch. In this step, you'll need to remove the factory breakaway bolt using your hammer and chisel. Don't worry about damaging the bolt because you'll be replacing it with the one provided by Dynamite Diesel. Well, having carefully chiseled the break-off bolt, we're now ready to remove it. Success. There it is. It's out. Next, we'll want to mark the location of the AFC housing. Uh, if it is lined up with the top of the fuel pump, uh, then just take note of that and reinstall in the same place. To be confident, we're going to use this tool to scribe a line on the injection pump and the AFC housings. Next, we'll want to remove the two 8mm bolts holding the AFC and the fuel shutoff solenoid. Having removed the two 8mm bolts, we want to now rotate the fuel shutoff solenoid out of the way toward the driver's side fender. And recognize this is going to take a little bit of effort. Oh. It's, it's coming. Okay. Using a fair amount of pressure, we're able to get it pulled off to the side. Next, remove the last fastener on the AFC housing with a large flat blade screwdriver. You can see the extra length will be helpful for us. Okay, it's out. That was a simple one. Next, pull the AFC housing up and rotate out of the way toward the rear of the truck. And once again, we'll want to mark the stock location, this time of the fuel plate underneath. Now we're working carefully to move this off, rotating it up and back. Also being careful at the same time not to damage any of the gasket material. Use this sharp instrument and scribe around the perimeter 
of the stock fuel plate like this. Fairly simple procedure. The next step is to remove the stock fuel plate, once again using the flat blade screwdriver. It was a little tough in the beginning, but as you can see, it rotates out fairly easily. And be careful, of course, not to lose the washer inside. We've now successfully removed the stock fuel plate. Anxious to get it out and install power. You can see the difference now in design of the two fuel plates. The factory one on the left and dynamite diesel performance fully adjustable from 50 horsepower to 125 additional horsepower on the right. Once again, take a very careful look at the cam lobe. Installation is now in reverse of what we have just done. <clears throat> You'll notice, first of all, the position of, this, of the fuel plate. Setting further back towards the driver would produce something in the range of 50 additional horsepower. Sliding it forward towards the front of the vehicle, all the way to the front, will yield an additional 125 horsepower. That's where we're going to set it. Next, we'll reinstall the AFC housing. Be sure to line it up with your scribed mark or the lip on the pump, depending on what you use for reference. Use the stock screw and the supplied bolt in place of the stock tamper-proof fastener. We've reinstalled the AFC housing and lined it up with the earlier scribe mark. We've reinstalled the factory screw and also the supplied bolt in place of the stock tamper-proof fastener. We're ready now to rotate the fuel shutoff solenoid back into place and replace the two 8 millimeter bolts. We've rotated the fuel shutoff solenoid back into place. It really wasn't all that difficult and have replaced the two 8 millimeter bolts. Check each of them for proper torque. Perfect. Next step is to slide the fuel line clamp back into place and retighten. And in this case, we'll go right back over the unpainted area, right there, exactly where it was before. Tighten the three bolts. Next, we'll reinstall the intake air horn and the dipstick tube. Next step is to install the dipstick tube after securely mounting the air horn. Looks like we're good to go. The last and final step is to attach the air tube from the intercooler to the intake air horn. This will take just a couple of minutes. Good to have another set of hands. With everything complete, you'll now want to make sure that both negative battery terminals have been installed securely and tightly. Then check the engine bay to make sure that all tools have been removed from the working area before we attempt our first startup. And as you can see, we have a few tools that we've uh, left in place. Next, a quick visual inspection, uh, making sure that each of the bolts removed uh, has been tightened securely. All bolts and screws have been replaced. And I think we're ready to start it up and see what it feels like to have an additional 125 horsepower.